everyone, I am Rebecca from Cabinets, and today we are going to dye some 100% acrylic yarn with Rit Dye More Synthetic Dye. It has been a really, really long time since I've dyed acrylic yarn uh, at all, uh, and I am really excited to try to revisit a low immersion technique I tried in Dye Pot Weekly number 172, but with using more dye. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Don. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. And I'm really excited and optimistic that this will turn out as we hope. Today we are going to dye 100 grams of 100% acrylic yarn. This is Studio by Nicole, just some white acrylic yarn that I have already wound into a circular skein from the ball that it came in. And you can do this in a couple of ways. I happen to have an automated skein winder, which helps a lot, but you can also wind the yarn around a nitty knotty or even the back of a chair. Um, the reason why you want it in a more circular, loose fashion is that you don't want uh, to have the resist from a ball of yarn if you're hoping to dye a lot of it. Now, one other thing that you really want to do is add ties to your yarn. And I'm gonna be doing this in the form of these reusable nylon zip ties that I use for dyeing all the time. Uh, I also recommend that you take the time to add some other butterfly ties around your skin so that way it does not get tangled. I'm not always good about adding extra ties myself, but uh, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> so a butterfly tie, involves sort of separating the yarn into sections. So if I bring the yarn through one section like this, one of the strands is gonna be going over half and then under the other. I'll bring the other strand around like this and then I will tie the tie, making sure it is in as loose as possible. The reason for doing a butterfly tie like this is that it's less likely to slip around the skein of yarn because the zip tie will, for example, will likely move all over and if I added other zip ties like this they could all end up in one spot. But the butterfly tie is a little more likely to stay put. And so let me go ahead and do one more right here. I'm going to go through about half of the skein and then I'm gonna cross over with this side and come under here and then tie it off. Uh, you really, really don't want these tight because if they're tight, then you can introduce resist. But if they're fairly loose, they can help keep your skein in order. Uh, and so I thought that that would be worth uh, just showing. Before we dye our yarn, we do want to pre-soak it so that way we can have the best luck possible actually dyeing it. Um, in this bucket right here, I have just some plain tap water and there's no vinegar or anything in here and we are just gonna let the yarn soak uh, for, I would say at least 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I am squeezing the fiber out to try to help things get wet and re-dunking it. I'm not sure how absorbent acrylic is overall, but we're going to let this soak for at least 30 minutes. Unfortunately, acrylic yarn isn't an easy fiber to dye. Uh, unlike wool, where you can use even food coloring and acid to do that. That doesn't work on acrylic. I actually don't know a lot about the chemistry of dyeing acrylic or synthetic fibers like that, but you do need to make sure you're using a dye uh, that is indicated for dyeing synthetic fibers. Uh, acid dyes, tie dye, things like that just won't work. Today we will be using Rit Dye More Synthetic Dye in Royal Purple and Peacock Green to dye our fiber. Now these both happen to be fairly old. The purple, this is the same purple I used way, way, way back when in a very early episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And the green is probably at least a year old. Now all of the tools and equipment that I will be using today are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't 
used for food. Uh, so I have a dedicated dye pans um, and I'll be using gloves and tongs that I never use for food for this project. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is using high heat on acrylic yarn. So even the instructions say that you must use on stovetop to maintain high temperature. A lot of dyes you can do at room temperature or just start with high hot tap water or some even, I've never tried dyeing anything in the washing machine, but there actually, believe it or not, are instructions for different dyes you can do that, but I've never tried that personally. The directions indicate to wear gloves, uh, use a stainless steel pot with a lot of water so things can move, and they want you to maintain a high temperature for the duration of dyeing, um, and to add the dye, mix well, add the fabric, and you need to, they want you to stir constantly for 30 minutes, or even up to 60 minutes. Now we're clearly going to be doing some things very very differently. Uh, we aren't trying to get an even color so therefore using a high amount of water with a lot of stirring isn't necessary for what our goal is. Uh, we're going to be using less water and adding the dye on there. Now what I saw previously with this low immersion technique is that a lot of the dye spread all over and I thought it was only one color but a lot of that extra dye did wash away, leaving us a beautiful pastel variegated yarn behind. So today I'm going to try to use more dye than we did in that past video to see if we can pump up the volume of that color, even if it's going to lead to a lot of washing. There's probably going to be a lot of washing at the end of this video. But back to the instructions and the integrity of our acrylic yarn. Acrylic will melt at boiling water temperatures. And unfortunately, the temperatures that you need, those really hot temperatures to dye the yarn, also will not melt into an amorphous blob, but the heat will change the integrity of the fibers. They might appear a little more flat, uh, a little less, you know, sort of perfect twist. Uh, I will be doing everything I can to avoid that as much as possible, but it is a reality of dyeing acrylic yarn. I don't know of how to do it without that result because you need the heat in order for the dyes to set. So I don't know if you've ever made something out of acrylic and then steam blocked it, where you pin it out and then use steam to help the fiber sort of relax into place, uh, thus killing some of that tension that you have there. It works really, really great, but you're effectively doing that in the dye pan when you are using uh, the higher heat. I have just placed our pre-soaked yarn into my four inch deep full-size catering steam pan. Now one big difference between what I'm doing today and what I did in Dye Pot Weekly uh, 172 is that today we're only dyeing 100 grams of yarn. So even as I increase the total amount of dye, that is going to increase the ratio even further because there's only 100 grams of yarn in here in the pan. The other thing I'm planning to do is I'm going to add just enough water to cover the yarn because we'll be adding more volume in with our dye, but I think I'm not going to start heating the pan until I add a little bit of dye. And I'll talk about that, I guess, a little more as we get started, but let's mix up our dyes. But I almost forgot. Let's add four cups of water from our pre-soak into here. Okay, and I definitely want more liquid in here before we turn on the heat because I don't want it to melt a ton. Again, the burners are gonna be here and here. So I think that I'm gonna want to prepare dye in at least two cups of water uh, to apply here now. The big reason why I'm not heating up the pan yet is that we saw color spread out all over. We had this purple all over last time that rinsed out. And so maybe if I have the dye in contact with the yarn for a little bit of a time, even though it's cold, maybe that'll help us get more intense colors. Um, in each of these cups, I have one cup of actually our pre-soak water. And now let's add two tablespoons 
of our purple to one carefully. Last time I used squeeze bottles, I'm not going to bother this time because I think that the colors don't strike that fast. Alright, I do want to be very, very careful with regard to splatters because this stuff will stain. Uh, and then I'm going to rinse this off so I can measure out the green. I do have my work surface protected with just a uh, shower curtain. Okay, and I'm going to shake it up really well. There's a lot more of the green left than the purple because as I mentioned the purple is older, um, but I think the purple has a bigger impact. It might be more pigmented than the green. So what I don't know, and the reason why I'm mentioning the age of the dye, is it's possible that these dyes don't uh, hold up very well over time, but they are in liquid form already. I didn't have to dissolve them from a powder, so there's that. But now let's go back over to our pan. So coming in with the purple first, that's a lot of dye. I am pouring it down on one end and here towards the middle, and there is some amount of spread just from the liquid. I'm not moving it much. Um, I'm being very, very uh, careful. But hopefully this will give us something that is more pigmented than what we had before. And so now, here's this green. Okay, adding a bit more down here and adding some here in the middle. And right now, I'm gonna turn the heat on to medium heat to start heating things up. Uh, I am intentionally leaving some white areas because if the colors spread, I'd like to be able to see that. Um, and there's a chance we could come and add more color, but don't forget, um, right now I have added, as I'm like touching to sort of work it through a little bit, I have added four times as much dye as I did the very first time I tried this. So not only do we have four tablespoons of dye instead of two tablespoons of dye, but we have only 100 grams of yarn here versus 200 grams of yarn in the other project. So the chance of getting some more intense color here is greater. Um, now I can already see some steam start to come up and a little bit of bubbles. I am going to keep an eye on this and I believe that I'm going to cover it potentially um, to help trap some of that heat in there. But first I'm going to give it a couple minutes and let it heat up a bit more. It has only been a couple minutes and things have already spread pretty far and I think they're going to spread further. But one thing that I do know is happening is our heat is fairly concentrated in those two main areas. So I am going to add that is hot back there. So I'm going to reduce the heat and add some tin foil um, to trap the steam here in the pan and it'll help uh, spread that heat a little more evenly throughout. I am on lower heat now, um, and I think I'm gonna leave things here for 30 minutes, then we'll come back. All right, it has been 30 minutes, and the color has spread a lot. We still have some green down here that isn't spread, we have a hint of some white. I am torn. I don't want to touch the fiber because I kind of want to see what happens. Um, part of me wants to touch it, part of me doesn't. Ooh, okay, I'm not going to touch it. If that white is left, then that's what we will see. Um, but I am going to... See, I'm having to be careful because the tin foil here touched the dye and I didn't want to set it elsewhere because this stuff can stain. But I am going to leave it, I think, on low heat for another 30 minutes. 
uh, and we'll see what happens because don't forget last time the color spread all over and then when we washed it a lot came out so I don't know what to expect <laughs> but we'll just have to wait and see okay it is cold enough so that I could comfortably handle it there is a lot of pigment left in here um, and what I'm gonna do Ooh, the yarn is not very pigmented. Uh, this could be the result of an old dye. Ooh, that green's pretty. Or it could just be that it is really, really hard to dye uh, acrylic and that the more dilute, that the concentration of it really does matter. Um, okay, I am gonna go rinse this pan first and then we'll rinse the yarn. Okay, if the, all the deepest purple rinses out, then I might have a hypothesis about the dye being too old. Um, but actually, it looks like we might keep some of the deep color. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That green, though, is not really sticking around. Not really. I mean, we've got a little bit of the green, but otherwise, yeah, it's mostly getting overtaken by the purple. Now, it is very, very possible, and in fact, I would say that it's probable that different colors do better. Um, and I'm going to start adding some soap. The different colors do better when it comes to these acrylic dyes. And the type of fiber that you're using, potentially even the source, of the acrylic fiber could make a difference. Ooh, the ribbons took up some really nice color. That's really pretty with the green. But otherwise, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, where did the green all go? Uh, I know that the pot got covered. I have seen some green stick with when I try to do some speckles. But, I mean, I think this comes down to certain pigments are better uh, at sticking around. It does seem like we got a lot of purple, which is great. Um, but it really seems to happen uh, quickly. And so, like we got, we have hints of green, even though I added what I thought was just as much, but the green didn't really seem to make as big of a difference. Now, the positive thing is that after just a few rinses, uh, we are still seeing bleeding here, but it is significantly less from what we saw at that start when we had all that excess color rinsed out. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and um, rinse this a few times off camera, and then I'll come back. Wow. Uh, we are basically clear, and it's only been two or three rinses since that first one. So, I'm actually a little impressed. Uh, I remember the first time I used this, I feel like I was probably washing the acrylic along with the wool-based yarn, and the amount of dye would be way, way, way too much with wool. Wool accepts a lot of color pretty easily, and so I think it was a mistake to try this with wool. I think that this is beautiful. I think this is really, really beautiful. And I love that we have all of these tones in here. Like, we've got lavender, almost some white, a little bit of green, some deep purples. This yarn is not like anything you would find with commercial acrylic. Now, is it the most balanced? That I don't know. I think I would have to cake it up to see. Um, but certainly, I think that I would say the integrity of the fibers went pretty well. Maybe not moving it and letting it cool. Um, maybe letting it cool in the pan and not moving it and flipping it was really good. I would say that 
and I'm not going to do this today because I want to see how this looks dry, but I would be inclined to, if I was doing this, to dye the yarn, rinse it, put it back in the pan and dye it the other side. I don't know if that rinse is absolutely necessary, but to help you see where you might need more color. Um, interesting, but that green definitely, it may have had it in, the purple may have overtaken it, but I don't think so. I think the green just doesn't work nearly as well as the purple. So anyway, like the dye mouth is clear. I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. So Dawn, I'm really curious to hear what you think so far. Dawn, I think that we've learned a lot today. Certainly the purple is much more intense than that green. And the purple is older, so it's not about uh, this. I mean, like, I guess it could also be the stability of the dye. The green is newer, but maybe it went bad. I don't know. Either way, there's a lot more purple in this yarn. We do have some areas of a more intense green here, and I believe that we might feel it there and here. Like, I think the purple, intense purple by itself is this uh, deeper color. And so I think in some areas where it covered the green, that's where we have those more gray hues. Um, and then there's a little bit of the green right there, but a lot of the green got overwhelmed. I now also really think that low immersion like this is not the way to go. Uh, I think that hand painting followed by steaming or full immersion if you want something solid, but I think hand painted followed by steaming is probably a better way to get that color in. I definitely did not try to move the yarn when it was in the pan, mainly, well, I'm not, mainly because I didn't want to encourage it to spread. I sort of wanted it to stay put uh, as best as possible. And certainly where you first add the dye to the yarn is where you got the most intense color. Once it's spread, like there's still some areas that are white in here. There's pastels, yes, but I think that it's possible given the amount of dye that we had to rinse out and that it easily rinsed out, uh, I think that some of the dye might react. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. I was just gonna say, I think the dye might react with water, but it's in liquid form. So, I mean, it's possible, I suppose, that uh, there's, that the concentration of the liquid dye, I don't really know. I don't know the chemistry of what is happening, uh, but I mean, it did work and we've got beautiful variegated color that is more intense. I mean, it would make sense for more dye to lead to more color in the yarn. Uh, but I was nervous that if I added too much dye, that instead of a variegated yarn with different colors, we would end up more with a tonal. And I mean, the green got pretty overpowered, but it still worked. As for damage, um, the strand integrity is pretty good. There's some areas where the yarn does feel a little flatter. Um, there's some areas here where the twist is definitely disrupted. Uh, but overall, in a lot of areas, the twist still looks pretty good. And so I may, another reason why I made an effort to not move the yarn around very much once it was hot was that I was hoping that by not moving the yarn, if it was starting to melt and relax a little bit, that by not moving it, I wouldn't then change the shape as much. Uh, and so I don't know if this is better than some of the others, but what I will note is that the yarn, oh, of course it's not gonna do it anymore. But I will note is that the yarn is very staticky. I don't know if you can see that it's sort of like following my finger. It is winter and dry. So I think that while texturally, there may not be a big difference in how the dyed versus undyed look, uh, the dyed definitely feels a little bit rougher. I suppose if I handle it more, we get some of that softness back. So maybe it's just stiff, sort of like new jeans. And so if you rub it, 
then you can get some of that soft feeling. I mean, that looks actually really, really similar to the original yarn. So there's that possibility. Um, and actually that makes me a little more optimistic. Overall, I think that the color in the yarn is really pretty. And I think that you could use, have a lot of fun with this dye and play with techniques on acrylic, especially if you can't or don't want to use wool or other natural fibers. Uh, it is possible to dye it. I think the options are overall a bit more limited, but I am gonna play with some color mixing using these Rit Dye More dyes and dye some more acrylic yarn in the not too distant future. So on that note, I want to give another huge thank you and shout out to today's lab partner, Don. Don, thank you so much for being my lab partner today and asking me to play some more with acrylic. This is definitely not a dyeing technique that I have a ton of experience with, but uh, I think that there are possibilities here. And especially if you have a bunch of acrylic yarn that you want to turn to another color, or again, that the, as a yarn, um, source, this is your preferred fiber type, there are things you can do to play with it and have fun with color. If you'd like to learn more about how you as a viewer can become a lab partner for a video, uh, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. As the lab partner, you can pick the yarn base and tell me some of your color preferences and then I will design a video with you in mind. But if you have a specific request or an idea, uh, just reach out to me uh, before you sign up so that way we can talk about uh, what I might have on hand in terms of bases that aren't like my most frequent yarn bases and things like that. Or you can check out the rest of the shop for ready to ship yarn that has been featured in my videos. I have lots and lots and lots of yarn there. So again, Don, thank you so, so much. I do have, I think, two colors of I Dye Poly, uh, which I haven't played with yet. But I think that ultimately, different colors will be slightly different on different fiber types. Uh, and so some of them might work better than others as we've seen here. I mean, even, I don't know um, the fiber content of these ribbons. The ribbon took up some beautiful green color, which is a lot more like the green we saw on the bottle. The greens we have in here are much more of a blue green, which is something that we've seen in the past. Uh, so the hue of that color is not necessarily the same, but it depends. I don't, again, I don't know what kind of dyes are in there, but I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I do hope to play with this year, in addition to playing with color mixing and exploring color in that way, which I'm really into right now, I do hope to play more with different fiber blends and fiber contents and really push myself away from my favorite three or four yarn bases, which I still love. Um, but I know that it's hard sometimes when I want to do a new experiment, I tend to want to use colors and yarn that I have a good feeling for, because if I'm using something slightly different, then I don't know if some of the subtle differences from the result or from my technique or from the yarn base. And so that's why as a control, I typically use the same ones over and over, but I do have dozens of different yarn bases and different sources and stuff. So I'm, I'm working on pulling those in more and playing with them. So I hope you really enjoy that. Subscribe, turn on notifications and leave a comment below to let me know uh, what experience you've had dyeing acrylic yarn and what things you like to do or what you'd like to see. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.